Hello everybody, I'm Nora Burrows. Because the fish quilt is coming along quite nicely and that scarf that I showed you yesterday is not gonna take me very much time, I wanted to add a third smaller project because right now the only small project I've completed is that one scarf that I showed you yesterday. So. I told you a little bit about the festival I was participating in. It's coming up in only like, you know, month and a half, two months, and I need to get some of these other smaller projects done. I've never made a pillow casing before, like a decorative pillow. So I thought I would do that. I thought that in the booth, it would look really nice to have like a bunch of pillows around. So I went to Joann's just now, and I got a stack of these pillows. They're 16 inch square pillows. And then I also got one, 20 inch pillow and I thought that would be a really fun thing to do I think I'm gonna do like a quilted on the front and then the back do envelope an envelope closure but not quilted just like a single layer of fabric and is that what people do for pillows I was like trying to think about it I was like do you quilt both sides of the pillow form I guess you could but I think that that would be using up extra fabric and extra batting and it would take more time to quilt it and stuff so I thought I would just do quilting on the front and then the single layer envelope closure on the back is what I'm thinking. So for the first one, I wanna use this Tula Pink Dragonfly fabric that I think is so super cool. I love that so much. And then uh, you may have seen in my recent fabric haul, I got this gorgeous fabric. Let me show you these ones together because I also have two more fabrics to go with this pillow. Here's the dragonfly fabric. This is a tulip pink fabric and typically the tulip pink fabrics are just so bright and have so much going on that I like to pair them to kind of simmer them down a bit. So in this case, uh, I have this French general pink, which is a very different tone than Tula Pink's typical fabric. So this will kind of calm it a bit, as well as this other um, kind of modeled solid here. It's uh, like a limey kind of color, I would say, and it brings out these leaves really nicely. So I guess my thought is that I would cut this out to be a rectangle, um, you know, because visually I think that would look cool and then have some sort of piecing on the just on the top and the bottom of maybe these two fabrics and then use this this fabric as a border uh, and I think that this kind of brings out some of the pinks and this one brings out some of the greens so first up I'm just going to cut out this piece here and then I'll see what I want to do next so I think what I wanna do is cut some of these triangles that will end up being much smaller than this. They'll be, they'll be more subtle um, once you take into account seam allowance. But I wanna kinda of do three on each side and then um, the triangles pointing in will be that green color and then the green will go out to the edge. So it'll kind of look like this. With three on each side. The way I'm cutting those triangles is I cut a strip of fabric to be one and three fourths wide here. And then I put my triangle template and these triangles can be as big or as small as I want them. But I line it up with the line that I want it. And then I make my cut and come around and cut the opposite direction and then just keep going back and forth. I should actually spin it around this way and then I don't have to walk around the table. I'd be cutting this going like this. This is the way I really want to do it. I'm going to cut another one the opposite way. And then I'll do this same thing with the green fabric. I could instead have the triangles pointing in, which might look kind of cool. Uh, let me cut the green pieces and then I'll make a decision. So I've decided I'm gonna have a pretty drastic change in direction here. Um, I cut these and they're just not the right green. So I, I, I asked my husband, cause he can be quite helpful sometimes. I said, what if I just changed the green to be a different green? What would you think about that? And I think he just felt like it was a little bit busy. It was taking away from the center of this piece, which I agree, especially having this 
kind of dramatic floral out here as well. Even though the colors go nicely, it's kind of taking away from this. So I think what I'm gonna do instead is I cut some of these strips. I cut them one inch, so it'll be half inch finished. And then I'm gonna take this kind of checkerboard here and cut a nice big strip of that and then do another strip of the piece on the outside. So right now I cut my strips and I'm gonna start by just sewing the strips around to kind of make a little very thin border around the dragonfly. I put the very small border on my dragonfly here. I also decided uh, to make a second one because I'm thinking if I have the two pillows, people can either buy them separately or maybe a lot of people um, want sets so they could buy the set. Uh, so I'm gonna make two of these. I do not have enough of this pink fabric to do another border on the outside of that black and white fabric. I had initially wanted to do a nice thick border of the black and white and then another border of this pink, but I just don't have enough of that. So that's not an option. And then I was noticing, cause I was working on those fish half square triangles, um, how nicely this green goes together. So this green, I think goes really nicely with both of these fabrics, really beautiful, but I don't think I have enough of this green. So what I decided is I'm gonna take a break on this piece for a minute, finish all of my half square triangles, finish that big half square triangle border for the fish quilt. And then at that point, I can see if I have enough of this, in which case I'll just do the border on the outside, which I'm also not so sure about because I don't know if it's like too blendy, like it's not, the green is not necessarily close enough to the block to really be able to get the impact of this green so I'm not sure, but I, I, I think it could work. Um, you know, it'd be sophisticated. So we'll see. I don't think I have enough of this anyway, but let me see, let me do all those half square triangles. I'll see how much I have left of this and then we'll come up with a plan. But at the very least, I think um, after this border, this this will be the next nice big thick border on the whole thing. And I could just leave it there. I could just end the pillow with this big thick border. And I think that that would be really dramatic, um, but, but we'll see. I finished the scarf top here and I just need to kind of trim the edges but besides that all of the pieces are sewn together. I'm still undecided about how I'm feeling about this piece. Part of me really loves it and thinks it's super cool and part of me is just still unsure. Um, so next I need to pick a backing. Uh, I should say that the um, last scarf I made and this scarf uh, they don't have batting. So it's just gonna be the top and then the backing. And I'll finish this the same way that I did the other one with turning the edges under 1 4th inch and hand stitching it shut. For the backing, I am thinking either a gray or a brown, something solid would be good. So I'll have to see what I have. I went to go look and see what options I had for a backing and I have very, very, very few choices, but I actually think I found something that would work. So I have this green, it's like a foresty green um, flannel that I think could be really nice with the colors here. Let me put it down and see how it looks next to it. But yeah, I think that will be beautiful for the back. And then what's funny is I was wondering, you know, if I had a big enough piece where I'd only have to, you know, piece two pieces together instead of piecing a bunch of like these little tiny, you know, I have like so many of these little tiny pieces of this. And I was like, gosh, I hope I have like two big pieces. Um, so I would only have to do one seam. And I found this big piece and it is the perfect size. I won't have to do any seam at all. It's actually the exact same width and the exact same length of this top. Um, so perfectly the same size that I'm almost worried it's gonna be a tiny bit small, but it should work. So I think that will be really nice together. I'm really excited about that. Um, and now that I have the backing, and the top, I don't even have to cut that, literally. I will just uh, put them wrong sides together, put little clips all around the outside, and then start to sew it shut. I've made a lot of progress on those three projects today, so I'm feeling really good about that. We just talked about the scarf. Uh, and then in terms of the fish quilt, I did sew all of the half square triangles 
blocks that I need to make that the next part of that top. Um, I don't have enough of that green fabric to also use it in the pillow top. So that's kind of a bummer, but I have some thoughts about that. I can either buy some more, I think. I think my local quilt shop has some more of that, so I could buy some more, but that is not what I wanna do. I would rather find something that I like just as much. So we'll take a look at some options uh, tomorrow and see what I have or if I just wanna pull the trigger and, and buy that same fabric that I love so much. The fish quilt is really approaching its end stages. I think I just have to sew some of those pieces together and then add some borders. So we'll take a look at some border fabric tomorrow and then also pick out a binding. So that's, that's the fun part. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.